Well, you know, right now we're really in the midst of, I would say, a, a revolution coming out of the genome sequencing revolution in 2000. You know, in 2000, we sequenced the first human genome. It cost probably, you know, $1.4 billion. And now we can sequence every patient for probably $1.4,000 COGS. And so from that perspective, we really actually, one, know a lot more information about all the diseases that affect us and uh, like cancer and other areas. And two, we can also use the genetic tools that we have to create new therapeutics. So one of those classes is definitely mRNA. Um, mRNA, as you know, has the basis of our vaccine technology, one of the vaccine technologies, which has really transformed the outcome of COVID. And I jokingly say, this industry literally just saved the world with mRNA. And so over the next 20 years, I think we can use mRNA to, for lots of other applications, either to make protein or inhibit the production of proteins. And we're gonna see applications in that for a lot of different disease areas, including oncology. So how do things come to you? And, and do you still live in, are you in Chestnut Hill? You're, you're in the, the Cambridge area. You spent, I was looking at how much time you must have spent in Cambridge. Anyway, that, that, that's where a lot of these startups are, are, are at this point. I would say still coming out of MIT and Harvard and I guess on the West Coast as well. Is that where you beat the bushes for, uh, uh, for you know, new technologies, new companies? Yeah, it turns out actually Boston has become the epicenter of biotech right now, and there's a few reasons for that. One is obviously the great uh, academic centers we have with MIT and Harvard, but two is really the massive inflow of pharma R&D facilities into Boston. So we've seen Novartis, we've seen Sanofi, we've seen Pfizer um, come into Boston with big research laboratories, and that's really transformed the environment within Boston biotech. And that's why I think we're really now the hub of the world. But of course we have the additional centers out of San Francisco, San Diego, and um, now emerging biotech centers outside of that as well, such as, you know, Chapel Hill. Chapel Hill, sure, the research triangle, I guess maybe, yep. Um, you mentioned private company. It, it is a public-private partnership. I can remember that you have to try to get grants from the National Science Foundation or from all these. I mean, their basic science is important. Government can seed a lot of, of uh, advances in this area, but you mentioned the private sector. Is it 50-50? What do you think? Yeah, so I would say when you think about the biotech innovation, you know, if you start really at chapter one on the first page, ultimately it comes from basic science research that's funded you know, by the government, by the uh, NIH, et cetera. And so that's really where it starts. And in fact, that you know, that's why we want to encourage that and support that. That's where the next generation of biotech companies are going to come from. So 10 years down the road, those discoveries are being made right now in laboratories. And so we are really uh, focused on making sure that next generation research continues. It's super important, for example, that we get good funding for these public agencies on an ongoing basis. Um, hopefully funding uh, without too much conflict out of politically, because it's so important for so many applications. Dr. Barton, just your point uh, of needing to get these drugs through the FDA process. I mean, that, that, that's not easy. And my guess is once you figure out how to do it, you have some sort of a recipe, some sort of a plan, a playbook for how companies can do that. It, it, is that the case? And has it gotten more difficult to get things through the FDA or easier? How, what, what would you say to that? Well, first of all, I could say the modern FDA agency really started with the DUFA legislation years ago, and that really provided the infrastructure and the financing that the agency needs to run effectively. And the agency is working incredibly effectively. As you saw with COVID, when, we, when drugs were submitted to the FDA, we got pretty quick. I don't think you can get any quicker. That was light speed for regulatory um, actions. You know, so the modern agency is working very productively and collaboratively with the industry. Now, one thing to remember, that doesn't mean we're lowering the bar, right? It really means we're working together. And so when the FDA says, I need X, I need X formatted in this ma manner, I need data Y, I need you to make sure that the trials run like this, with this many patients and this outcome. That type of communication is what we have right now with the industry and FDA to make sure that our drugs can efficiently get through that process. So I think the FDA is working very well and effectively with the industry to get life-saving drugs to patients as quickly as possible. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.